Hi, my name is Reese. And my name is Taryn. And this is Talking CAR. We are members of the Jason Rosa Society in Massachusetts. If you haven't heard of us yet, well, you have now. In this monthly podcast, we are going to be talking all things CAR. Now let's get started. <laughs> Welcome to Season 2, Episode 9 of our podcast, Talking C.A.R. And just like we have been doing throughout all of Season 2, we're trying to do some new things with our podcast. And what are we doing today? We're going to read a book! (laughs) Yes, we're going to be reading this story, Gingerbread for Liberty, How to Help... How a a German Baker Helped Win the American Revolution. Yep. (laughs) It is by Maya Rockliffe, with pictures by Vincent X. Kirsch. I think I said that right. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) Okay, so getting started. Everyone in Philadelphia knew the gingerbread baker. His honest face, his booming laugh. And, of course, his gingerbread. The best in all the 13 colonies. His big flowery hands turned out castles and queens, horses and cows and hens. Each detail drawn in sweet, buttery icing with the greatest skill and care. And yet... Despite his care, there always seemed to be some broken pieces for the young, for the hungry children who followed their noses to the spicy-smelling shop. No empty bellies here, the baker bellowed. Not in my America. For once upon a time, he had been a young and he had been young and hungry too. He uh, and he followed his own nose to this new world where he, a hard-working young man, could open his own bakery and always have enough to eat. But now, something was in the air, beside the smell of baking gingerbread. Newspapers shouted, Revolution! Independence! Independence, Liberty! Liberty. (laughs) Boys rolled up blankets, shouldered guns, and kissed their mothers goodbye. The baker hung up his apron, dusted flour off his hands. Where are you going? asked his wife. To fight for my America, he said. I was a soldier once. That was long ago and far away, she said. You're a baker now, and you're old and fat. The baker knew his wife was right, but he knew also that he loved his country. Somehow, he had to find a way to help. He packed his bags and went to join General Washington. General Washington did not say that the baker was old and fat. General Washington was too polite. Anyway, he had other troubles on his mind. The men are threatening to leave. They say the food is terrible. And there's not enough of it. The baker rolled up his sleeves. No empty bellies here, he told General Washington. Not in my America. The bigger trouble was on the way. Across the ocean. Your Majesty, those Americans think they can beat your redcoats. <laughs> what if they're right? The King of England wrote to the other rulers and hired their armies to help him squash the revolution. When the ships sailed into sight, even General Washington turned pale. Who had ever seen such an army? Not me. Not me. Definitely not me. I have. <laughs> These sold- oh, <laughs> these soldiers come from the land where I was born, the baker told General Washington. Let me go speak to them. Perhaps I can persuade them. We are not their enemies. Perhaps I can even persuade them to switch sides. If you are caught, you will be killed, Washington warned. The baker smiled. Then, then I, I must, must not, not be caught. caught. <laughs> In the darkest hour of the night, he rode across the bay. With each dip of his oars, he thought of words to win the soldiers over to the American cause. There are some German words that she's... <laughs> sorry. That I'm going to say, and I'm sorry if I <laughs> pronounce them wrong. So. Revolution! Befrying! <laughs> Independence! Uh, where is it? Oh. Una Venkai! <laughs> Liberty! 
uh, Freiheit! <laughs> Let's hope that's right. <laughs> but when he looked up to their hungry faces, all his fine words slipped away. What could he say? I have a bake shop, he began. And as the baker spoke, the soldiers seemed to see the fragrant steam rising from his ovens. They could almost smell the spicy gingerbread and taste the sweet, buttery icing on their tongues. And you always have enough to eat, the soldiers asked. No empty bellies here, the baker told them. Not in my America. <laughs> Across the ocean. Your Majesty, we just don't understand it. These hired armies seem to disappear. Many, many loaves and battles later. The British have surrendered. The revolution is over. We won. My work here is done, the baker cried. Washington said, not quite. Did, uh, did he bake the British soldiers gingerbread for dessert? We'll never know. They didn't even leave a crumb. That's it. Yeah, that's the story. <laughs> that's and it. in the back of the book, they do have a recipe for gingerbread cookies, yep. which we made. We'll talk about that later. Yes, yeah, so we'll talk about that after <laughs> the commercial. So, see you We later. hope you enjoyed. She's back. Who you may ask? Why Harriet, of course. Harriet Lothrop, founder of CAR, has come back special for the 125th anniversary of NSCAR. She's flat, you can color her however you desire, and you can take her anywhere. She wants to see all the things CAR members are up to today. To get your own, visit www.travelingharriet.weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y dot com. Be sure to use and follow the hashtag Traveling Harriet to see all the places she goes. We hope you enjoyed the commercial. And now we're going to talk about some of the things in the book. So, as you may remember, the German soldiers who were on the British side, when the baker was coming over to try to persuade them to switch sides, they could smell the smell of gingerbread off of the baker. And that sort of reminded them of their home and got them Two excited sides. yeah so that sort of lesson of like smells can like what is it trigger called? emotions yeah smells can like make you like smells that make you like feel home things. feel at home yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of told so we're going to talk about like some other things and some of like the recipes and smells that remind us of home so yeah starting as we made this gingerbread that was in the book, and that sort of like triggered some memories from a while, like years past when we used to build gingerbread houses. Yeah. And that's usually during the holidays. But during the holidays, most of the time, we make these cookies that have been passed down through our family. They're amazing cookies. <laughs> They're called chocolate jumbles, I think. Yeah, it's like... It's got chocolate, it's got molasses, it's got, it's got coffee. Co yeah. They're just And amazing. they're covered in royal icing. And we usually make those and we'll like, I think this year we Eat made, a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think this year we were planning to give them out to people and we made like nine dozen, but we ate all we of ate them. We ate all of them. <laughs> we had like a huge, like humongous bin full of them, but we ended up eating all of them. So that's it a big, it was fun. It was yeah, worth it. That's a big memory of like smells in our home during the holidays, as well as a smell that reminds us of our grandparents is sort of like the smell of like vinegar oh yeah that's kind of like our, a weird thing but our grandma whenever we go over to her house it, whether for a holiday or just going to visit she'll mm -hmm. always make this thing called cabbage salad yeah I, it's got i don't know what's in it <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know exactly what's in it it's there's not like a written recipe written recipe for it it's just like passed down through, vocally yeah mm -hmm. so so that's it's passed down amazing for a time. i think it's just like <laughs> vinegar something cabbage, cabbage other oil, things something like that <laughs> i don't know but it tastes really good it's amazing <laughs> yeah, it tastes really good but yeah that's another thing that's like passed down through our family also during like february around, yeah during, oh my gosh it's coming up <laughs> so um just around just before ash wednesday i think it's, right is it on mardi gras i don't know but the tuesday that second of that week, tuesday 
something like in that. In February. Um, we're, coming from, like, our German background and our family, there's this holiday called Fat Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least um, that's what we call it. Yeah, we make, our mom makes um, these like donuts. German donuts. They're I called Fosnots. I think it's very similar to, like, a beignet. Similar? It's, like, a similar to a beignet. I think I that's what it's called. But they are super good. Oh, okay. And that always reminds us of, like, coming home to those in February when it's, like, cold outside. And it's such, like, a warming After smell. school surprise when you yeah, forget yeah. it's Fat Tuesday. <laughs> when you forget about it and they're just there. It's such a, like, heartwarming surprise, which is super cool. And that recipe has been passed down for a while in our family as well. So those are some of the smells that remind us of our home and, like, make us happy but yeah. everyone has those so we would love to know what smells scents make you guys feel at home and mm-hmm. just trigger those emotions i don't know <laughs> exactly like recipes or smells of i don't know like there's always like different smells like sometimes the smell of like hot printer ink reminds me oh, of home i don't know that's why weird. <laughs> We print a lot of stuff. <laughs> but, weird. like, that smell is, like, super comforting for me. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of that. But, like, tell us on our Facebook page when you listen to this episode, if you find it there. When we post it on our Facebook page, comment below and tell us some of the scents that like remind you of you home. You feel at home. Yeah. Yes. And like we normally do, we release an episode every month, on the second of every month. But I think we're going to do one more episode for this season. And then once we learn more about National Convention and, like, what's really going on, I think we're going to do that. another podcast. Just Well, that's kind of... what the next one's going to be about. National no, it's Convention. Not. Yes, it is. It is? Yes. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so if it's a few days late, if we're still learning stuff about it, just... Know that it's coming. <laughs> It'll be here at some point. Yes. So tune in next month, whenever that may be. <laughs> and we will see you next time. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Tune in next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this month's episode. Be sure to check us out on Buzzsprout, iTunes, and Spotify. Also, make sure to like us on Facebook and Instagram. If you haven't heard Season 1 already, you can find those episodes on the Talking CAR Facebook page. Be sure to tune in next month!